Hi, this is Lisa Klein. I own Total Health Physical Therapy with offices in DC and Herndon, Virginia. And we wanted to put out a video to help people understand what you might be feeling in your body right now with everything going on with this uh, crisis that we're in right now. And I'm joined to the side, you can't see her, but a friend of mine is helping me kind of shoot the video and you might hear her voice and she may be asking questions as well. Say hi, Danielle. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Danielle. <laughs> so we do a lot of trauma work at Total Health and we are an outpatient physical therapy practice, but we do full body rebuilds and we do a lot of work with people who are recovering from trauma, whether it's physical trauma, emotional trauma, psychological trauma, um, and trauma has a way that it sits in your body. And what we want to do is put out a series of videos to help people at home really improve their resilience to what's happening because I feel like from what we're seeing, we're going to be in this for a you know period of time. It's not like it's going to be over super quickly. So what's very important when you're in a situation that is impacting on you as much as what's impacting on us is now that you have tools so that you can stay functional, you can stay resilient, you can stay thinking that like how we need to do in order to kind of get through. Does that make sense, Danielle? It makes sense. All right. So the first thing we want to talk about is how your body responds to trauma. And trauma is defined as anything happening to you that is above and beyond kind of like your normal everyday situation. And as you all know, that's kind of where we are now. And what happens when your, your body or your, your system gets information coming in, whether it's what you see, what you feel, what you heard, what you saw, and that information is overwhelming, stressful, difficult to process, your body will go into a very well-known uh, response to that. And this has been happening since time immemorial. Our bodies are designed to do this. Our bodies are designed for survival. And our bodies are designed to go into a, a trauma cascade when the information that's coming in is a little bit um, much, as we would say. So the first thing that happens when you see this information, you're watching the news, you're hearing things, is your system will go into a little bit of a stress response. And stress in your body, everyday stress is processed by your stomach, which is actually right under your ribs on that left side. And the stomach is designed, again, to process everyday stress. Everybody has heard of the vagal nerve. It's getting a lot of good press. It's finally hired a good press agent because there's tons of really good press coming in out about how important the vagus nerve is and what it does, and it's super important. The vagus nerve innervates your entire digestive tract and comes down through your chest, crossing every which way around your heart, and down through into your stomach by going through the respiratory diaphragm. So the vagus nerve is the nerve that controls and we'll go into the paradigm that's known as the fight or flight response. So again, the vagus nerve is cranial nerve 10. It comes out of the brain stem here, goes into the cranium all the way through and down. It's a very profoundly affected nerve. It's very active and it is a nerve that goes right into your, what's called the autonomic nervous system. What controls how chill or how not chill you are. I'm not chill right now. Are you chill right now, Danielle? No. Not I'm really. Not chill. Not We're chill. not chill. <laughs> yeah. So it's that vagus nerve that when, again, you hear something, you see something, whatever, will start to load up. And it, if it's an everyday stress situation, it's going to hit you right in that stomach first. The vagus nerve goes through the diaphragm. So the diaphragm is going to lock down and kick up also into your adrenals. So the adrenals are the little glands that sit on the kidneys like little hats, and they produce stress hormones. So they're the ones with the diaphragm and the vagus nerve that kick you into this fight or flight. So fight or flight means get me the hell out of here or ah. So I don't know about you, but my Megan, who basically runs my office for me, I'm driving her bananas because every, I'm like, we gotta do this, let's do this, let's do that, let's do that. So this is that fight response of trying to desperately react to what's going on. My attorney actually, he said, you know, you're fighting and you got to keep fighting, keep fighting. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to keep fighting. So again, when you're under this type of stressful situation, you can go into a fight response. 
You can also go into a flight response, like my friend Danette, who's currently in Baltimore because she went out of town. <laughs> she left. <laughs> Whatever, girl. Okay, so this is fine. It's totally fine. I'm battling with this bottle of red wine. At the it's moment. fine. It's fine. We'll get to that in a minute. So anyway, so your body will go into this response. Okay, now if this is a typical everyday kind of situation that's stressful, the ways to get out of that response are cardio, you know, running, walking, wine obviously will help. Um, you can get out of a stress response relatively quickly. Not one that's going to last for several months, but yeah, but that's what we're going to get to. So you can get out of it. Again, so for right now, if you're finding yourself in that type of fight or flight reaction, you want to get out, you want to go running, you want to do some type of cardio, you want to sweat, like get that out of your system and process it, and then you will start to feel better. All right, I'm trying not to get the COVID-15, so I'm going out every day, and I did a six-mile walk yesterday, and I'm trying to get out and, and out and about and exercise so that I can keep myself calm. All right, so stress coming in, vagus nerve, adrenals, got it? So far, so good, got it? Okay, now, got it, got it. excellent. Now, if that continues, if it's a lot of information coming in, then your body will pass through fight or flight and go into freeze. So freeze mode is called the dorsal vagal reaction. It's the vagus nerve basically like, again, literally freezing, like a shock reaction. Okay, so um, me sitting on the couch watching RuPaul's Drag Race all weekend would be an example of that reaction. Don't judge me. It's very that. inspirational. So. Again, so there's fight, flight, freeze, which also is dissociation. Is so again, me, you know, watching TV, watching videos, um, you know, doing hobbies, which is all fine, all that's great. So, but if you're finding yourself in that type of situation where you cannot get off the couch, realize that you are in now a vasal, a uh, dorsal vagal situation. You've kind of gone into like a shock reaction. So, what do you do for that? We're gonna present a video after this to give you some hands-on techniques that you can use to help your body with that. But there are great homeopathics also. Um, Rescue Remedy, which you can get at Whole Foods, is wonderful. We use uh, Calm5 from Energetics is a great homeopathic for that. Fish oil. Uh, also going out again, getting exercise is really good for that. But at that point, you've kind of gone into more of a neurological shutdown. So one thing that can help you in that situation is writing and journaling. So what I've been doing is writing lists and you know just writing things out. So I talked to my business coach today and um, it's overwhelming everything that we're having to do. It's just a lot, Danielle, it's a lot. So he says, you need to write it down. You need to write lists. I'm like, that's great. And that way you can kind of break down what you're dealing with a little bit, business issues, home, school, whatever you're needing to do. So again, if you feel like you're becoming overwhelmed, then writing things down may help that a little bit, okay? You need to do something to start to crack that neurological state of being locked down, okay? So again, yes, dear? So about the <laughs> writing the checklist, do you recommend like you, you wake up in the morning and like just get everything out of your head and write a big checklist or something you do over the course of the day? Or? Uh, that's an excellent question. So Danielle asked when, how do you do this with the checklist? So if you're getting up in the morning and you're feeling very overwhelmed, you don't know what to do, then you can absolutely do that. You can get up and the first thing could be to write the checklist, which is wonderful. I've started um, doing yoga in the morning again, so I know Danielle from a yoga retreat, and something that's helped me is I get up and I do a 10 minute AM yoga series that's on um, Beachbody On Demand, actually, and it's been fantastic for me because it gets me moving, it gets me in my body, gets me breathing a little bit, and then I'll do my checklist, so yes. Um, however you want to do it, whatever works for you. Yep. So again, to double back. So we're in this crisis situation that is going to last for a while. What you really want to do is understand the reactions that your body is having so that you can do something about that. Part of the challenge right now is to not get stuck. You don't want to get stuck in fight or flight. You don't want to get stuck in freeze because then you can't do what you need to do. All right, part of what's our challenge right now is keeping our immune systems up, keeping us healthy, 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 and then dealing with the enormous situation that we have to deal with. And 
to get something that for you works, whether it's cardio, yoga, meditation, homeopathics, like something that you can do and you may need to do it on a daily basis because information is going to keep coming in, the situation is going to keep expanding, it's going to keep developing and what you want to do is be aware of what's happening in your body. So what I had, I had a pretty traumatizing experience happen earlier last year and what I noticed was that I went into a state of, um, I kind of shut down and I functioned but I didn't function great. And I'm like, you know, I really, I don't want to do that. Like, I, I want to keep my wits about me. And one of the things to understand is that when your body goes into this trauma response, when you're in fight or flight, and then you go into freeze, information at that, at some point is going to shift and not really go into the part of the brain it needs to go into, the frontal lobe. If your system is in something that is very overwhelming and your body feels like you're in a survival crisis and the information then will start going to the limbic system, which is not really where you want it to go. That is the survival part of the brain, okay? That can become a pattern that gets set, set into your body. When that happens, you're no longer working from this part of your brain, the frontal lobe, which is where your thought is and your consideration. So what we're having to do daily is look at, okay, what do we need to do today? What's happening with the business? What's happening with the family? What's going on? And we're having to make very significant decisions with a lot of information that keeps changing. And in order to do that, it's really important to try and keep calm and centered and come out of that, again, that fight, flight, or freeze reaction. Because again, I think I'm driving Megan bananas. Because every day I'm like, let's do this, let's do that, let's do that. She's like, shut up. So it's not helpful, <laughs> it's not helpful. It's not helpful. Okay, so you want to try and calm down. So again, I'm going out and trying to go walking, running every day. Do the yoga. Realize that whatever's happening to you is totally normal. If you are, if you can't get off the couch, that's normal. If you you just want to, you know, run, go away. If you want to go to Baltimore, like leave town, that's normal. Okay, your body's not doing anything that's not normal. But what I want you to know is that there are things that you can do to help this make this easier for you. And the sooner you get those strategies in place, the better you're gonna do for long term. Because for all of us right now, we're in a challenge. It's a marathon, it's not a sprint. And what we wanna do is give you some tools to help you understand, again, why is your body doing what it's doing? And then what can you do about that? So the next video that we're gonna post is from Anne, who's excellent. And she's gonna give a video about bringing the adrenal low down. And then we're gonna have videos coming out about working with every part of the limbic system and the organs that process emotions and give you a lot of hands-on tools to help that, help that happen for you. But again, biggest takeaways would be Keeping, you know, cardio is so good, walking is very good, yoga is very good, meditation is very good. And then again, if you're finding yourself overwhelmed, then the journaling will come in and making the list is great for that. Questions from the audience? From the audience of one. <laughs> the audience of one. So, what do you, I mean, <clears throat> I would guess part of uh, managing one's response to this at the moment is that we do find ourselves in either this, you know, fight, flight, freeze, mm -hmm. coping drinking, <laughs> whatever other... No uh, judgment. I'm not judging. <laughs> what other, other potential behaviors? Um, how do you recommend just kind of like... I guess part of it is you have to get a bit comfortable with you may be coping in a way that isn't the healthiest. That's an excellent question. How do you get out of that? That's how do you get out of the freeze frame? Excellent question. So what Danielle is saying is that um, what's very common in a situation like this is that people will, will go towards unhealthy coping mechanisms. And again, your body is a system. It works, it's always trying to get stability. So your body will do whatever it needs to do to try and make it through whatever's going on. Whether that's with alcohol, drug, whatever. There's no judgment. That's a sign that your system is, is dysregulated. And that's often controlled by that vagal nerve. So ways to bring yourself out, out of that would be, again, the journaling. I know it sounds cuckoo bananas, but it's very helpful. So just the journaling, you need to move all of these feelings that are coming into your body and all of this stress out of your body. If you don't, you will become kind of a little bit unstable 
and your body will go towards whatever your whatever your flavor of choice is whether it's watching drag queen game shows <laughs> Um, eating chocolate while watching drag queen game shows, which is fine. Drinking, whatever. Again, there's no judgment. It's just that. Just watch yourself. And that's a sign. If, if your body is craving these, these coping mechanisms, it's a sign that it needs some help. Meaning, again, cardio, journaling, meditation, fish oil is great as a mood stabilizer. It will help calm things down. Homeopathics, rescue remedy is great. Again, we use the Calm 5 something to kind of calm your body down, okay? Your body needs a break. So try, again, I've started trying not to watch the news so much because it's just kind of, it's overwhelming. Not that I don't want to know what's going on, but it's so much, all right? So when you turn the news off, lay down, put your legs up, put on some music, put on a candle, and just see if you can just try and calm your body down. Again, we're gonna give you some hands-on strategies for that as well in the next video. But you need to flood your nervous system, what you see, what you feel, what you hear, with something that is calming. Something that is the opposite of the news. For me, is RuPaul. So whatever works for you, okay? Whatever TV show, whatever. You need to try and like, okay, we gotta, we gotta calm down. Again, because this is not a sprint. This is a marathon. And the more resilient you can be, the more helpful you're gonna be to yourself, to your family, to your community, and to the world at large. Because everything is kind of upside down right now. We need to keep our, I was gonna curse, we need to keep our selves together, okay? In order to get through this, we need to keep ourselves together, give ourselves tools of how we can get through this, things that you can do every day. Good? All right, hope this was helpful. And our next video is gonna be, again, working on that adrenal load, and then we're gonna do more videos from there. Good luck, stay well, wash your hands. Bye.